Thank you so much. I would like to make a small change in our schedule because I would like to give the priority to the senior editor of Washington Post, Lally Weymouth, who have made the honor to us to be here tonight and she has, under, um, she has been under a time pressure. And I would like to give my uh, seat on the stage to Lally Weymouth, the senior editor of Washington Post, to give her remarks and I would like to have a warm welcome for her. Very nice of you, and I think uh, Thanos sets a great example to all uh, young people who want to become journalists. He is incredibly persistent. <laughs> I turned him down again and again, and he told me, no, 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 you must come, and that's the reason I'm here. It's really Thanos, and he's a great example, and I have to say he's really a star. So thank you, Thanos. So he told me, um, anyway, I am, as he said, the senior uh, associate editor, editor of the Washington Post, and I have the great job of flying around the world and interviewing world leaders. So that is really fantastic. I think it's a great honor to be here tonight at the um, Foreign Press Association dinner, and where we're celebrating five outstanding young women who are going, who are receiving scholarships. I understand from Thanos, of course. Um, for the work they've already done and the work they will do in the future. Um, their work ranges from writing about the Rohingya, the slaughter of the Rohingya in Burma, to writing about um, the indigenous, public health, many other issues of the day, immigration, etc. These young people, to me, are the hope of the future. And how great it is, I know you would all agree, that they're all women, all five awardees. I am uh, speaking to you right after, or shortly, a few weeks after the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, who worked for the Washington Post for the last couple of years of his life. And I think if his brutal murder in Turkey showed nothing else, it showed what risks journalists take to, to speak the truth, to tell the truth. And I think we should all bear that in mind. Um, it's clear. I don't need to tell anyone in this room that journalism is, it, is important, but not easy. Uh, it's incredibly, <laughs> very hard to see up here. That it is um, hard, to get, uh, hard to get things right because m many people, officials and foreign leaders, don't want to tell you things. They lie to you, i.e. But you have to persist, as Thanos did, of course. That it's a risky profession. <laughs> And um, we remember all the journalists who covered the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and the price that some paid even at the cost of their lives. So I think that you want to think about, oh my goodness, thank you. So I think that you want to uh, think about when you're embarking on your journalistic careers, you want to think about the, um, my, I was about to say my father, who was the publisher of the Washington Post, the late Philip Graham, used to say that journalism is the first draft, rough, draft, rough, draft, rough draft of history, which I believe it to be. And I have, have to say, no offense to Anthony, that I believe it is the first rough draft of history, not fake news, if it's done well. Um, I grew up in Georgetown, in Washington, and I had a very privileged upbringing. My father and mother were both the publishers and owners of the Washington Post. And so as children, we were kids, we ate at the dining room table. And every night we heard discussions of what was going on in Afghanistan, what was going on everywhere. They were passionately interested in foreign affairs and domestic affairs. Presidents, publishers, cabinet members roamed through our house. And it was a very different Washington than it is today, than what you read about in the papers. Republicans and Democrats were close friends, even if they disagreed on issues. They had dinner afterwards. Um, the media was different. The media played a crucial role, but the press and the nation were far less divided than they are today. The Cold War was on, and of course there were no cable channels, no 24-hour-a-day talk shows, and no social media. So I think that you young journalists can play an important role in helping to take us back to a degree to the days when we focused on what united us 
not what divided us. This won't be easy, of course, but when I talk to politicians and businessmen off the record, I notice they yearn for those days and they all dislike, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, the gridlock that's going on today in Washington. And the fact that, as you know, they used to bring their families to Washington, or maybe you don't know, congressmen and senators. They used to live in Washington. So their wives would become friends. The families would become friends. Now they come to Washington for three days. Then they go home. So their wives don't become friends. The families don't become friends. And that helps, of course, with the hatred that goes on between the parties and the extremism that's going on today. I'm not saying it's the only cause of it, but. I also thought as a word to you young ladies that um, you could, <laughs> I know there are problems for women journalists today as has been evidenced by the Me Too movement this year, but I think you should realize how in a way privileged you are compared to when I started out in journalism, working for the Boston Globe and covering surplus food luncheons in Boston. Now this was deemed to be a very, it was deemed to be the woman's role in the paper. And I worked with a very experienced reporter who taught me the ropes. But men covered politics, not women. And today, of course, I think it makes me very proud to turn on television and see so many women anchors. I mean, it's taken for granted now, of course, today that women play an equal role. I think that my, my mother, the late Catherine Graham, and maybe some of you saw the movie The Post last year, in which she starred, or in which her character starred, shall we say? She became the exception to all the rules, and she became a role model for many young women. When my father died in 1963, she was a housewife and really had taken care of us kids, four of us, and had you know, worked on charitable causes, really done what we would call today zero. And so the one thing she knew is she didn't want to take over the paper. So she turned to me, I was then in Harvard, to write her speech to the board, which is played in the play by, in the movie by Alison Brie, who's a very cute young actress. <laughs> and uh, very flattering, of course, to me. <laughs> and um, so I, of course, knew how to write a speech. I was in Harvard, or Radcliffe, as the woman's part of Harvard was then called. So I wrote her speech to the board, and she delivered the speech to the board. But she knew what she wanted to do, even though she was incredibly nervous, as you can imagine, because she wasn't young like you. She hadn't been to journalism school. And um, she started learning how to do a really huge job running a big company, or then a small company, at the age of 45. So she was quite intimidated by this. And she used to rehearse her Christmas speeches, in fact, in my bedroom. You know, Merry Christmas to you all at the Washington Post, so on and so forth. And so, 63, she was a housewife and really had taken care of us kids, four of us, and had you know, worked on charitable causes, really done what we would call today zero. And so the one thing she knew is she didn't want to take over the paper. So she turned to me, I was then in Harvard, to write her speech to the board, which is played in the play by, in the movie by Alison Brie, who's a very cute young actress. <laughs> and uh, very flattering, of course, to me. <laughs> and um, so I, of course, knew how to write a speech. I was in Harvard, or Radcliffe, as the woman's part of Harvard was then called. So I wrote her speech to the board, and she delivered the speech to the board. But she knew what she wanted to do, even though she was incredibly nervous, as you can imagine, because she wasn't young like you. She hadn't been to journalism school. And um, she started learning how to do a really huge job running a big company, or then a small company, at the age of 45. So she was quite intimidated by this. And she used to rehearse her Christmas speeches, in fact, in my bedroom. You know, Merry Christmas to you all at the Washington Post, so on and so forth. And so, but by the time, but many years later, of course, she um, became a very confident speaker. Um, so the movie, The Post, which Spielberg made last year, highlights her transition from housewife to a woman who was able in 1971 to say, against her lawyer's advice, we will publish the Pentagon Papers, even though her lawyers were worried that this would interfere with an IPO, which we were just about to do at the Washington Post. So publish we did. The Nixon administration sued, of course, and the Washington Post and New York Times went all the way to the Supreme Court. And we won, she won, and the press, and freedom of the press won. <laughs> so, 